So if you've ever been working on a project where you've had footage from the outside and it involves the sky, you know that sometimes it's just not perfect. Sometimes you miss the right shot in camera, sometimes the sky isn't just how you want it. Maybe you need more clouds, maybe you need less clouds, maybe you just need a totally different look. Well, one way to fix that is to actually replace the sky on DaVinci Resolve. And what you used to have to do in your editing software was go in, mask everything out, and then find some stock footage with the sky that you wanted, and then make sure the motion matches up. It used to be a huge pain. But now DaVinci Resolve has a sky replacement feature, and today what I want to do is show you how I use it in my workflows and how you can use it in yours too. It's very simple, so let's get started. Now this is all going to be done in the color page, so we're going to go, want to go hop over into the color page here. I'm just going to make a few more nodes by hitting Option S, and it's gonna be able to make you a node very quickly. All right, so next what you wanna do is go over here to your effects library. And if you don't see this, what you wanna do is go up here and there should be a thing that says effects and click on that. So we're gonna search sky and we're gonna drag this onto our node tree here. And I'm gonna delete. I'm just gonna delete that connection. Make sure I connect green to green. Now you can see nothing happens. And that's because we haven't told DaVinci Resolve what the sky is yet. DaVinci Resolve isn't that smart to where they can actually tell where the sky is yet, but someday that'll happen. But anyway, so what you want to do is you want to go back here to our third node, and then we're going to go down here and we're going to hit this little eyedropper, which is our qualifier. Then we're going to want to go over to the 3D one right here. And now we're going to draw across the sky. And we're going to tell DaVinci Resolve what the sky is. So now what we're going to do is connect blue to blue here. And you can see that we have a lot of the sky uh, masked out. And also, if you need to refine this further, like I'll go in and touch this up, what you can do is you can go down over to here with this little eyedropper with the plus. And then we can go back, of course, to our node here. Then we can refine that a little bit further. It doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, we can do a few other things in the actual sky replacement effect to help this out so now what you want to do is go back to your sky replacement node then we're going to go down to where it says artificial sky and we're going to up our sky opacity okay so now you can see we have a fake sky and right now first thing off the bat that i want to do is i'm actually going to adjust the horizon height a little bit so you can see as i bring it up the horizon is going to get a little bit wider here all right and then if you want to get a better view what you can do is you can hit shift and f and it's gonna give you a much bigger view. Then you can go over here to the refine and you can get a little bit more detailed with your mask here. This is just something that you're gonna to have to go through on a case by case basis though, because some skies are gonna be a lot more difficult. This one is a little bit easier, but anyways, so if you just wanted to do a simple sky replacement with a clean blue sky, there you go. That's, that's pretty much it. You can stop watching now. But if you wanna add in some more details and things like clouds, what you can do is you can go over here to cloud opacity and bring that up. And you can see now that there are clouds here and you can do things like mess with the cloud scale. You can mess with the cloud shape a little bit. You can mess with the cloud tilt, the cloud detail, cloud fill. You can add in more clouds, but as you can see, this is a pretty cool looking sky, but you might notice something and that's as the camera moves around, the sky isn't moving with it. And that's a problem. And what we need to do is we need to go down here to where it says track foreground and we're going to want to track the foreground. All right. And now once you do that, you'll see that there's a bunch of blanking up here. So the next thing that you need to do is hit auto size for motion. And now you can see our sky looks much more realistic because it's actually tracking it uh, relative to the foreground. So it's going to be able to sell the effect much more. So another thing that we can do is we can actually add in a fake sun. This is something that you have to be careful with because it can make things look fake very quickly. This position here is not correct relative to these shadows here. So the sun is off somewhere over this way. So in this case, we wouldn't really add in a hot spot, but if you did, what you'd want to do is go over here to brightness and bring that brightness up. And then you could also mess with the size here. So what you can do also is you can mess with the sky integration. And what this is going to do is help you match it to whatever uh, lens and whatever shot you were actually using. 
because if you have an out of focus background and then the sky is perfectly sharp, that's gonna look very unrealistic. So if we were shooting and the subject was the cars, we might wanna defocus the lens a little bit. And this is basically gonna simulate aperture on your camera. You can also mess with the exposure here. Also another thing that we're gonna to wanna to do to sort of sell this effect better is we're gonna to wanna to mess with something called cloud time. And what cloud time is, is obviously clouds move when they're in the sky. So if you just have a long scene and the sky is standing still, it's not gonna look very realistic. So what we can do is we can actually keyframe this. So I went to the beginning of my clip. I'm gonna to go to the end of my clip now. And then I'm just gonna mess with the cloud time a little bit. This is gonna depend on the length of the clip. And again, the type of effect that you're going for. So for cloud time, as you can see, as I scrub through my timeline, you can see that the clouds are actually moving and doing things like they would in real life. We can just hit shift and F one more time. And that's gonna bring us back. And now one last thing is you can actually mess with the sky color here. If you wanted to make this more of a sunset type of look, you definitely could. And you can also mess with the horizon color, make it a little bit more red. This wouldn't really make sense for this image because um, it's obviously like mid afternoon, the sun's coming out from this way. So to have a sunset like that doesn't really look right. So this tool is amazing. I hope you guys find it useful in your projects. Go ahead and mess around with all these different tools because I wasn't able to talk about everything today. So that being said, guys, that's all for today. If you like these type of videos, go ahead and subscribe and go ahead, leave a like, comment, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.